2024 is off to a fast start here in Ocean City, much faster than I have expected. So in today's mid-month market update, I want to take you through what we've seen over the first half of January and compare that to what we expected, as well as dig into what that means and why you should care. If this is your first market update video that you have seen of mine, we start with a little bit of the history, then we cover with some visuals and graphs where we are, and then we dive into what we expect to see coming up. So I want to spend a lot of this time looking at the trends over the first two weeks. I'm not going to read too much into it, but I do want to bring to you some of the nuggets that I have seen, um, you know, honestly, that I did not expect. So first things first, with the birds out of the playoffs, which is sad, um, I think there's reason to expect that we see demand picking up earlier than normal. And I know that may sound silly, especially if you're not a football fan, but that is usually a big deal this time of year. But I'm not the only one seeing this uptick in demand and conversations and showings. Other agents that I've talked to are seeing the exact same thing. In fact, I had an open house this past Saturday at a listing of mine that's been on the market for a while, and we had nearly 20 buyers come through. Uh, which was not expected. I was holding that open house with the hope of getting a few through just to see where things were to test the waters. And I was a little bit overwhelmed. So there's demand out there and getting to talk to those 20 people who are out there actively looking, I got a sense of what's coming. So with mortgage rates staying roughly flat over the past few weeks, um, one thing I want to hit on in a little bit is what the recent inflation reports and jobs reports, et cetera, mean um, for the forecast and expectation for rates for 2024. So inventory, we ended the year at about 232. We dropped all the way down to 212 on January 1st because of expirations and things of that nature. We do always expect that to come back up. And here we sit at 226 properties, up 4%, which is fine. That's normal. Um, days on market are continuing to be stable, but prices, here's where everybody really gets a little bit excited or confused. So condos are ready to shoot up again after a month of looking like things flattened out. And single families are staying roughly the same at down about 7% year over year compared to where we were last year. And there are reasons for that that I've talked about in last videos. Um, but the short version is the high-end new construction is not the prevalent group selling anymore. We're seeing a lot of the older single families, whether that's to be developed as new construction or just, you know, sub $1.5 million single family houses, they do exist. Um, not probably what you're picturing if you haven't looked at them in a few years, but that's become the bulk the last few months of what's been selling. And as a result, prices have been dragged down a bit. This is the one that I really want to spend some time on here and drive home. So new listings is a leading indicator, in my opinion, of what we should expect um, because without new listings, right, and obviously demands the other side of that, the number going under contract, but without new listings, inventory can't grow. It's that simple. So over the past few years in January, February, and March, we've had roughly 90 listings per month during each of those months. So knowing or believing that 2024 was going to mirror 2023 based off of how the trends have played out over the last few months, um, I expected to see roughly 90 over the course of this month. We're only halfway through, so it's not over yet. But we're only at 32 new listings. And the big difference there is condos are roughly the same. We're only a few under pace from where we were this time last year with the condos. But single families are lagging tremendously. We had far fewer than I would have expected. Now, we'll see how the second half plays out. But I don't expect there's going to be such a bulk of inventory coming over the second half that's going to get us back on pace. So that begs the question, are we going to see fewer new listings than expected throughout the year? And if that's the case, based off my inventory predictions and projections I made in the predictions video for this year, um, I'm already going to be starting off the mark because I had assumed that we would see roughly the same. And if we don't get more new listings and demand is still very strong, which we're going to see here in a second, um, we're shaping up for a very competitive and fast paced year. And I know that's not what you want to hear. Trust me, that's not what I want to be saying. Um, but I have to bring you the truth and the reality of the situation so you can act accordingly and be proactive instead of reactive. So Pending sales, we are roughly on pace to see what we saw last year. As those two little blue bars off to the right, we'll show you. Um, and as we saw in the second half of 2023, compared to the second half of 2022, we picked up steam. We outpaced 2022 in every single month in the second half of the year. So if that's going to remain the same, and if new inventory, new listings are going to be less than expected and less than we saw last year, 
What do you think is going to happen? Things are going to get tighter and harder for buyers in this market. As a result, prices are likely to continue going upward, not trend downward or even stay very flat. So closed sales, we are looking at having a pretty solid month um, comparable to what we saw in 2022, outpacing what we saw in 2023. Now, months of inventory for this and the condos that we'll see in a minute are still very, very low. Um, this has been trending down for a while now. And like I had said a minute ago, with new listings reduced drastically compared to what we saw last year in the single family realm, this is going to continue heading in that direction. It's going to stay a seller's market if you're looking for a single family home. And the few that I've seen go under contract over the past two weeks reflect that because those prices are higher um, than one would normally expect. But they're going under contract anyway, because the selection is just not there. Now, again, this will reflect that 7% year over year decrease. And as I've been saying for months now, I think we are going to balance out between 1.5 and 1.6 million. And I still believe that to be the case, um, especially as we drop off some of these lower months um, that we've had in the past, because it's a rolling 12 month average. Now, with the days on market, again, I don't read too much into this unless I see them going sharply in one way or the other, like we saw at the end of 2022, right? Things slowed down. We spiked from mid 40s up to mid 50s in terms of days on market. And that's that's significant. But we've been there for roughly a year at this point, not going anywhere anytime soon. Here we go with months of inventory. Again, still well below that six months of inventory, which is a balanced market. So condos, again, if we are 14%, price-wise, up year over year, and we've continued to be single-digit, double-digit, and this isn't improving. We are not getting more inventory, or simply put, the demand is keeping up with the new inventory that we do get. It's not going to change, and if that dynamic doesn't change, then this is still, once again, a seller's market. Now, one thing I want to mention, I don't want you to think if I own a condo, if I own a duplex of any kind, I'm going to get an unfair price, right, just because the, the inventory is not there. That's not how this works anymore. That would have been the case two years ago. That may have even been the case a year ago. But these homes that are still selling and selling quickly, that is keeping this where it is, they're nicer homes. They're updated. They're in good locations. They're in prime locations, whether it's the part of town, close to the ocean, whatever you may want. But the key is that if you don't have one of those premium properties, those are the only ones that are really drawing heavy interest the discount is necessary. When I say discount, that doesn't mean sell it for less than it's worth. It just means that you're not able to get that premium price that may be five or 10% greater than your neighbor who just sold recently. So those days are past, um, but everything still has a price and there's demand for just about everything under the sun out there. So with that said, prices are continuing their upward trend. Um, and I don't expect that this was an anomaly. I think this is par for the course that we're going to continue to see it trending upwards. Um, and I think we'll be in the mid eights really by the end of the year. Now, days on market still very low, and that's not going to change. We're going to work from the bottom up this time. Those days on market, again, I'm, I really want to stop talking about it, but I know it's an important factor and a statistic that a lot of people are, are paying close attention to. So the days on market is going to stay low. It's not going to change. I don't think it's going to go markedly down to the point where we need to be concerned, um, but I think it's going to stay roughly where it is for the foreseeable future. Price-wise, again, in January, we had a good chunk of older single-family homes um, that really took things down a bit more than I had expected. What we're seeing so far with what's scheduled for February is we should see things roughly flat, maybe tick up again, depending on the sold price when some of these homes close that are scheduled to close in February. So single family wise, we are where we are. That inventory is still so low um, and it's just hard to come by. So without getting a lot of single family inventory, which is just not going to happen, um, we're going to see more of the same. Now, do I foresee us getting in a situation like we were in about a year ago where there was so much new construction inventory that I felt you might be able to get a good deal on one of those? I don't think that's going to be the case um, in talking with uh, some developers who I know very well. They're all working on projects. They're always working on projects, uh, but I don't get the sense that there's going to be such a glut of them um, like we did see during that six-month period in 2022, where a lot of them did end up having to reduce their price, offer some incentives towards buyers in order to get those homes sold, but we've we've exited that period. So that was the, the deal period for new construction. Um, and speaking of new construction, there are a lot of projects upcoming that I have some uh, 
knowledge of that are not on the market. So if you have a need or a desire for a new construction home, whether it's a single family or a duplex, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to um, see if I know of anything coming that may be a fit for you. So inventory wise, again, I covered this earlier, but those new listings is something I'm going to keep a very close eye on that I'm going to report back on um, in the February monthly market update to see where we landed, because that to me is going to be the canary in the coal mine for where things are going to head over the next two to three months. If new listings end up materially lower and materially lower to me, if we were expecting 90, if we're going to see 70 or less, that's materially lower from where I sit. Because those three months, January, February, March, tend to have moved together over the past few years. And they've been pretty darn close in total new listings per month, um, three years running. So if we have a lower month than expected, one of two things is going to be the case. Either we're going to see more inventory than expected over the next two months, or we're going to see less, right? Common sense stuff. But I don't get the sense that it's going to be this delay of, hey, people just held off longer to list. I don't see any geopolitical or any other you know, exterior reasons that would cause somebody to make that decision. Um, so that's something I'm going to be keeping an eye, a close eye on. And inventory wise, again, we're, we're going to stay under or around 250 for the better part of the spring, which is about where we were last year. And again, I think we follow the same trends going forward. Now, mortgage rate wise, we'll have to see what happens, but some of the reports were not as friendly as investors uh, were hoping, but they weren't bad. So they weren't so bad or against expectations that now rates are expected to be hiked again. The Fed does not currently expect to increase rates anymore. There are still three rate cuts forecast for the year, and that still remains the same. It's just that the reports weren't quite as friendly as some people had hoped. So no change in my anticipated mortgage rate uh, landscape um, of ending up around 6% by the end of the year, but I do expect them to stay roughly flat around 65 for the next probably four months or so. So with that said, thank you for hanging out with me. As always, if you have any questions, you can either drop them in the comments below or reach out any of the ways you see on this slide. And again, if you're looking for something in particular that is special, that is unique, or just you haven't seen on the market in a while, I'm digging it very hard to go find them for my clients. So reach out. Thanks as always. I'll see you next time.